Given ADB is a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of 6 root 3 cm, so we know the hypotenuse is 6 root 3 cm, and one more thing we know is the radius of the cone is represented by BD. So we can say that BD is a radius of the cone, and the height of the cone is represented, let's say we say it's a hash. They ask us to find the height and the volume of the cone when the volume generated is maximum. So whenever we see maximum, we are using the second derivative to prove something is maximum. So first, we're going to find the differentiation of it first. So we know it's a d over d something. So since they are mentioned about the volume is maximum, so we know it's a dv over something. What is the other variable that we are studying about? We are looking at height. So we can say that it's a dv over d hash. So dv over d hash, first we have to find what is the equation for v. So we know the volume of a cone can be represented by v is equal to one third of pi r square hash. But since we are studying with respect to hash, we must replace our r in term of hash. So what we're going to do is replace r with hash. We're going to form an equation based on this triangle by using Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem tells us that a square plus b square is equal to c square. So we can say that r square plus hash square must be equivalent to the square of the hypotenuse, right? So once we have this one, since we are looking for r, so we can say that r square is equivalent to, if you do this one in calculator, you have 1, 0, 8. Then the hash square move over there, become minus hash square. So now we have r in term of hash. We are going to substitute our r inside of this equation to become this thing. So now we can get rid of the r and plug in our hash. So we can say that v is equivalent to one third of pi. So r square is going to be replaced by one zero eight minus hash square. So it's one zero eight minus hash square. And don't forget the hash. So we're going to simplify it by one third times hash first. So we have one third of pi hash bracket one zero eight minus hash square. Then we can expand one more time again. So one third times one zero eight, you have 36. So we have 36 pi hash minus one third of pi hash cube. So we have the volume in terms of hash only, then we are safe to differentiate with respect to hash. So we're going to differentiate now. So hash is alone, go there, it becomes disappear. So we have just 36 pi minus 3 go down 3 times 1 third is 1. So this is why we have pi hash square because the power is self reduced by 1. But we know we want to find minimum or maximum. We need to find the turning point first. How to find turning point? dv over d hash must be equivalent to 0. So we know 36 pi minus pi hash square must be equivalent to 0. So we're going to solve these equations. So we can say that 36 pi is equivalent to pi hash square. Since pi have the both side, so we cut off the pi by dividing pi at both side. So we left with hash square is equal to 36. Then we know hash is equivalent to plus or minus square root of 36. So which is hash is equivalent to plus or minus 6 cm. But hash cannot be negative, so we can say that hash is equivalent to 6 cm. Because height cannot be a negative, right? So we know height must be 6 cm, but the thing here is, we want to check whether it's a maximum or minimum. So what we're going to do is, we're going to carry out the second derivative, which is d2v over d hash 2. So the derivative of a constant is just 0. 2 go down is a 
negative 2 pi hash. So we try to substitute our hash is 6 into the equations. So negative 2 pi of 6 is eventually negative 12 pi, which is smaller than 0, means it's a concave downward. So indeed, it's a maximum. So we can know that when hash is equal to 6 cm, the volume indeed is a maximum. So next, they ask us to find the volume of the con. So in order to find the volume, we can just substitute back our hash equal to 6 into the equation of the volume. So V equal to 36 pi of hash is 6 minus 1 third pi of hash cube, which is 6 cube. So once we substitute everything in by using calculators, you can find the answer which is 144 pi cm cube and we are done. The third step, Mukrit is rowing from A to C and cycling from C to D. And the distance from A to C, we don't know. Later on, we're going to find. But C to D is basically 400 minus X. So we know the distance is 400 minus X for C to D. Is it possible to find what is the length for AC? So AC is usually the hypotenuse for the right angle triangles. So if this is 30, this is X, we can just find the AC by using Pythagoras, which is the square root of A square plus B square, right? Which is 30 square plus X square. So if we simplify, it's just the square root of 900 plus X square. So this is why we say that this, the distance is square root of 900 plus X square. So they ask us to find the distance from B to C if he rolled with a velocity of 40 meter per minute. So the speed of rowing is 40 meter per minute. Meanwhile, the cycling speed is 50 meter per minute. So the logic behind this question is we are looking at what supposed to be the X meter here if you are in a competition. If you're in a competition, you want to make sure that the time that you spend in from the starting point until the finishing point must be minimum. So it means that the time that you are spending must be equal to minimum, right? So in order to find minimum or maximum, we are using second derivative, right? So d over d must be equal to zero. So we are looking for time is minimum. So we can, we can say it's a dt. And we want to know that when t is minimum, what happened to our x? So dt over dx must be equivalent to zero. But do we have the equation for t? Hmm, we haven't find t yet, right? Can we find by our surf? Yes. How can we find? Because if we have a triangle like this, we know BTS, oh sorry, it's not BTS, it's DTS, right? Distance is equivalent to times, times, speed. Since we want to look for times, so time is equal to the distance divided by speed. So in order to find the time, must be the time, the total time must be equivalent to the time you spend in AC plus the time you spend in CD. So how to find the time? Just the distance divided by the speed. So the distance is the square root of 900 plus x squared divided by the speed, which is 40. For CD, the distance is going to be 400 minus x divided by the speed, which is 50. Let us simplify a little bit. So t is equivalent to the same thing, which is the square root of 900 plus x squared divided by 40. This one, we can split it down. 400 divided by 50 is eventually at minus x divided by 50 is just minus 1 over 50 x. So we are looking for dt over dx is equivalent to 0. So we're going to differentiate this whole equation with respect to x. So now let us do together. 
so dt over dx so 40 is a constant we can take it out first 1 over 40 then we take the derivative of this one so the square root the derivative of it is going to be 1 over 2 square root of 900 plus x square and don't forget to differentiate the inner function this is why we have 2x the derivative of n is nothing because the derivative of a constant is 0 x 1 go day become negative 1 over 50 so we are almost done so we know this everything must be equivalent to 0 so we can just continue to do in order to find x so what we're going to do is negative 1 over 50 go to left hand side because this becomes 0 right in order to find the minimum or maximum so 1 over 50 is equivalent to 1 over 40 2x over 2 square root of 900 plus x square so next we're going to do is 40 go over there it becomes 40 over 50 and now we have 2x over x we can just cut off the 2 we left with x over square root of 900 plus x square so let us try to simplify a little bit now with more spaces here so 40 and 50 can be become 4 over 5 is equivalent to x over square root of 900 plus x square so we're going to cross multiply so this is why we have 4 square root of 900 plus x square is equivalent to 5x in order to remove the root we're going to square both sides so this is why we have 16 if we square the root we just remove the roof which is 900 plus x square 5 square is 25 and x is going to x square right then we're going to expand the bracket so how do we expand the bracket is 16 times 900 if you do it in the calculators, you will have 14,400 plus 16x squared is equal to 25x squared. So if you move the 16x squared to the right hand side, we will have 9x squared is equal to 14,400. So 14,400 divided by 9 is going to be 1600 so this is why we said that x square is equal to 1600 x is going to be plus or minus square root of 1600 but since distance cannot be negative so we think that we take the positive which is 40. in order to prove that x equal to 40 is indeed is a minimum we're going to find the second derivative of these functions but the thing here is it's very complicated this is why we use the table method so how we're going to do is if you don't know you can check me for my video now we're going to do the table method so we're going to plug it in the numbers is slightly smaller let's say it's the 39.9 and the value that is slightly larger which is 40.1 into this dt over dx equations so we're going to check that when our x is equivalent to 39.9 what is the sign of the derivative and what happened we take a slightly larger which is 40.1 what happened to the sign of dt over dx so let us try to compute in the calculator but just remember 40 must be zero so let us do it in the calculator now so as you can see here we will get a negative value for 39.9 and a positive value for 40.1 so negative means something like this zero means flat positive means going up so this indeed is a minimum curve so we can say that x go to 40 indeed will give us the shortest time hey if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video do leave your comments below and let me know if you want to support us so that we could make more video like this the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel see you in the next video